Good afternoon, B-Side San Antonio. I hope you guys are having a great event today. I am presenting Mr. Felipe Perez, and he is going to do a walkthrough of identifying security holes during the development process, as well as do practical demonstration of how a developer can use SAS tool for static analysis and code vulnerability, execution in source code, bytecode, and binary, and identifying security holes during the development process. Uh, he will be analyzing many languages, such as Java, Python, Ruby, Golang, so on and so forth, and searching for key link leaks and security flaws in all files of your project, as well as your Git history. He's a very busy principal security engineer and security researcher at SUP Innovation, global researcher man manager at Hacker Security. He's a staff at DEF CON Group in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's talked in security events all over the world, and he is the founder and instructor of the course, Malware Analysis, Fundamentals Hacker Set Company online course. So be sure to check that out. Also remember to hop on Discord right after to talk with our sponsors and community organizations. If you have any questions for Felipe, please go to track one in the Weeds breakout room. And Felipe also wants to say hello to all of you guys. So have a great event. Hi, thank you. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, my name is Felipe Pires again, and I'm talking from Brazil now here from my office. By the way, my office is in my balcony, as you can see behind me, you know. Here's at night here in Brazil at, you know, at 6, at 6 p.m. Not 6 p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. Sorry. And um, yes, let's talk about during this, in the end of this event about the secure development right so here my uh home page it's very simple home page just to just to see some information about me you know and um here my presentations again i am um you know it doesn't matter that who am i but here the most important is i am advocate of the tax not a crime uh project i think you heard about that during this event and i'm a part of the DEFCON groups here in Sao Paulo, the staff teams, and uh, you know, I'm I'm support the DEFCON groups, the, the Red Team Village too, right? So here you can see some open source project that I have here in Zoop Innovation, my company here in Brazil. And uh, here's another presentations that I, I have been doing the in, during this year and the last year. And we have it here in, in English, in Spanish, in Portuguese, or everyone we have here some you know talks and here we have some articles that i wrote in the in pentest magazine hack nine and you know a forensic magazine in other places right so we, today we're going to talk about the the very interesting talk that i like by the way and um, about the secure development because this is a very interesting important process when you build something right of course related to, to a software or when you have some code because in the end of the day, we have a, you produce some code, you you know you build some code, and uh, you can produce it, and you can compile this right. If turn this up, you know, turning this this code uh, has a binary, or um, you know you can create a, 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 some apps using a, in a mobile environment, or you can use in a, a web application. But the first you need to create this code right, and um, here it's important to understand the difference between you know where what is SAS and DAS, right? So just a few explanations about that. You know, I I pick this pick up this information from the sign off site. It's a, I think it's a company responsible to produce some SAS or DAS product. I don't know exactly, but just a reference to you to see because I think it's important to explain the difference between you know. And uh, here the difference SAS it's a, a white box security test. It's related when you analyze the applications before or not before uh, actually yes before before to produce this right so it's actually the tester has access to the underlying framework design and implementation the application here is the important the application is tested from the inside out right so uh, you don't publish this applications yet right so on the other hand in the black box security testing in this case is a dust right so the application is tested from the outside, right? So you need to publish the URL, and after that you can execute the test application inside by name application security test, just to understand the difference between, right? 
So another uh, difference is related to a required, required search code. SAST doesn't require a deployed application, you know? On the other hand, on DAST solutions requires a running application, which means DAST doesn't require the search code or binary. It analyzes by executing the application. It means you need to publish these are the applications, you have the URL, of course, and after that you can execute this test. In this case, DAST, right? In this case, SAST is different. You, your, your analysis is uh, if in the search code, right? So here, another interesting difference, right? So when you talk about the SAST, find these vulnerabilities early in the SDLC. You know, it's a software development life cycle, this acronym, right? So this scan can be executed as soon as code is teamed, feature completed, right? But on the other hand, in that case, it's find vulnerabilities toward the end of the SDLC. You know, you have that this life cycle when you talk about the, the software, software development, right? So vulnerabilities can be discovered after development cycle is completed, right? So another difference, less expensive to fix vulnerability in SAST mode, right? Since these vulnerabilities are found early in the SDLC, it's easier and fast to remediate them, right? Because do you remember you don't you you don't publish yet, you, you know, the applications, right? Well, it's more expensive to fix vulnerabilities in this case in the DAS. Why? It's very simple because since vulnerabilities are found toward the end of the SDLC, it means after you publish your application, right? You need to remediate this. It's very complicated because if you if the attacker or you know find some vulnerabilities, the the fix needs to be emergency release. You know, you need to create some release emergency, right? So another point is can is can't discovery runtime and environment related to issues. It means since the tool is scan statistic code, it can't discover runtime vulnerability because you analyze the code. But in this case, you have a published, you know, you already published the um, applications, right? So in the end of this explanation, by the way, typically supports all kind of softwares. Example, including web applications, as I mentioned, web servers and think clients client and think clients, right? And the dust way typically scans only apps like web applications in web services, right? So that is not usable for other types of software. This is just a simple definition, right, guys? So another point is here is uh, you understand about this explanation, right? SAS is a statistical application, security testing. And today I will explain more about the open source, pro the open source project, right? About the OruSec is currently a SAS project that you can execute in your code, right? Or in your environment, your, you know, in binary, something like that. Again, this is DAST, as I mentioned, right? It's a dynamic application security test. It's too recommended to find the vulnerabilities externally visible, right? As I mentioned, okay? And here we have another interesting, EAST, interactive application security test. You can mix it both of them, right? So EAST is the combination of the statistic and dynamic test modules right and it has better result why because of course it's better because you can test both of them before and after the applications uh to be published right and here is the interesting point just ha has an option to perform it together with a security analyst you need to have in this usually this guy then it's called by application security guy right because this guy can be using this um type of the you know analysis to run it is the best type to test in terms of the false positive rate due to the human interactions right because of this you can reduce the false positive right but in my opinion in philippe opinion i think it's better you if you have if you need to choose for example a false positive or false negative in my perspective, from my perspective, it's better when you have false positive because you need to analyze it and you can see what this what happened in your environment, right? But when you have the false negative, you have a problem because something wrong 
it's happening in your environment, you know, and you 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 don't see during the scanning or another platform that you have, right? So okay, I will explain the difference between the SAS and DAS and YAS just to understand. So now I would like to explain more about the Aorus Sec, right? So the name is called Aorus Sec. You can uh, write this in, in Google, for example. And you can see more information about that, right? So, Zupin, uh, our sec is an open source tools. Again, you can click here using the GitHub or here, or sec.io. Oh, take you take a look at this. Some <laughs> videos about me. Okay, nice. Let's return here. So you can click here to see the documentations, and take a look at this in Portuguese and English, right? So identify vulnerabilities simple and fast, right? So Again, OroSec is an open source tools. So because of this, I'm presenting this for you because I really appreciate if you can do some, you know, pull requests in these tools because this uh, project, uh, it was created to the security team, inside of the security team from Zoop, but to give this project to the community, right? So this is a very important, your help for me, in, in, not for me, for this project actually. Right, so our is an open source tool that performs a statistical code analysis. Here, it's some keys to identify security flows during the development process. Right, so here's some tools, some languages, and, and tools that are, that um, our sec analyze, like you know, C Sharp, Java, Kotlin, Python, and like another different Terraform or Kubernetes. Right, so okay, here is, here is the web page. Okay, I can click here the documentations, and here I have some interesting information. So some sim simple overview about this project, right? So again, here some interesting thing that I like. It's an open source project, and here another point here. Check out all the support language and available tools. Here it's very interesting, guys, because you can see here all those languages and tools supported by Orosec. You can see here the Python. And take a look at this. Here is the engines responsible to to find some vulnerabilities inside the uh, environment. If you if you click here in some grab, for example, take a look what happened here. It's very simple. The explanation about how the some grab works. It means you have this um, another project inside the Orsec. Exactly, it's not a framework, but almost a framework, right? Because you have here many different engines, as you can see here, like a Golang, for example. In Golang, you have a GoSec and SingRap. It's two different engines, right? And, uh, but here is different. Take a look at that. So you have here, your OroSec Java. It's another engine, but not, but it's open source. You know, it's open source engine, but this engine, it's uh, created by the OroSec team. So take a look at this, you can see different engines inside the same project you know you can see the for example like a orsec kotlin same grep and orsec java different engines to work right so from my perspective it's very interesting because if for example same grep don't detect the vulnerability you can maybe to be detected by orsec java it's very very cool right so okay let's return here the overview where can you use the OrSec locally, right? So OrSec has an intuitive CLI made for developer where it's possible to perform a local analysis. This is the first idea when we created an OrSec, okay? And below you can see another different uh, locals when you can use like a C CICD pipeline and ID and, e and IDEA actually. Um, extension here it's the key both of these functions it was created it was suggested by the community right so because of this it's very important your pull request right so you can use in the ci city pipeline and you can use uh in by vs code for, for example right so here below you can some pictures but, but i will explain in the in live here and take a look at this orsec analysis types it's very important things right so the auto sec performance three types of analysis right the first is assessed as i mentioned in the beginning because of this explained difference between soft and dust and asked right and here 
is another interesting key. Uh, our sec analyze and can collect the leaks, right? So the leaks checks the search code for a possible leaks of credentials, private keys, or harded coded password. You know, for for example, if you are a developer or if you know <laughs> any development developer, and usually sometimes the developer put or forgot or you know um, takes the uh, some private keys inside the code or some hard coded password inside the code in a GitHub platform, for example. Uh, if you are a pen tester now and, I'm, and you are hearing me now, probably when you realize that when you perform some uh, recognition steps in a, in a pen -tester penetration test, usually when you execute this step, you like to use to see the GitHub if you can find some you know credentials of this some target that you are doing the pen test right so it's a first step that we recognize recognizing is recognition steps right uh, and the leaks it's very interesting because if the developer forgot some keys inside like you know AWS key or Azure key or GCP or whatever you can discover this in this engine right using this some order cycle leaks engines actually Another point is a dependence audit, right? So you analyze a project's dependence to check vulnerabilities in a, take a look at this, third part libraries. Because, you know, when you create, when you produce something, you know, when you create some apps, sometimes you need to import another different library, right? So it's very important if you, it should have important, actually, if you have some uh, tools, to execute some analysis in your code, right? If you see if this library, it was vulnerable or not, right? So here's the important things. Okay, so I think you understand now about what is OROSEC. So now I will make this overview about this steps. I will installing, I will installing now the OROSEC. You can install in, in different ways, right? So. Here are the requirements. I need to have the Docker and Git installed in my machine. I will execute this in my Linux platform here in my Linux machine, right? So here I have the my my CLI, right? So uh, by the way, I have here my this is my project. Actually, let me delete this because I will need to use it after. Okay, so take a look. At this I have here all sec demos. What I have here inside of this project, by the way. I have here my some codes vulnerable, right? So go in Golang, Java, and Kotlin Node, and PHP. Okay, Philippe, I would like to do this demo after your presentation. No worries, you can see here this information is in my GitHub here, not here, it's here. Okay, Philippe 86 or slash or dash or uh, or dash dem, sorry. And here all those codes vulnerable, right? So go lang slash API, and here we have different um, codes vulnerable, right? So here it's my GitHub. If you'd like to see something, you have many repositories and informations about me too, right? So uh, here it's a very interesting. If you remember, here it's the GitHub from this project, right? You can fork the project. You can, you know, uh, suggest some improvements, right? So it's here. And here, if you'd like to make another different test, you have here one folder called example, as you can see here. If you click here, you can find many others example of the vulnerable code, right? So just suggest you if you'd like to work, right? If you can practice your this way. Okay, let me install the RSEC here. Let me return the documentations here, not here. Let me close here. It's okay. Installations process. Okay. To install our sex CLI or Mac OS and, and Linux, you can execute this. Okay. I will copy this. As you can see, copy. Then I will pass here. Let me uh, pass selection here. And as you can see, it's very simple. Some curl with some, you know, flags here and the URL, URL to install to call the script and call the bash and request the last latest version right so i click enter and after that i will download the rsec in my environment and of course this is my user don't have some privilege to access i think it's more safe right <laughs> okay oh something wrong because i always forgot my password i don't know if you forgot your password but i always forgot my password okay 
our sec was downloaded and take a look at this very cool move it to local bean it's easier to manipulate the information okay or sec oops or or sec i don't know the comments dash dash help yes and i click enter take a look at this this is a cli simple cli you can use it in two ways right right so the auto sec using the flags and auto sec using a common right so here is available comments for now just for now because we can improve that right of course generate generate of our uh, auto sec configurations help i use it now here <laughs> help about the any comments right and start means start the or sec cli and a version actual actual version is tall of the or sec so i can execute this or sec just confirm the version in the version okay make sure it's the verse the verse two dot one dot zero okay so i see here that i can use the start here to start our sex cli okay perfect so let me execute this or sec start start what i don't know let me again dash dash help take a look at this many different flags here so i this is the use it usage yeah usage and here you can use the eight examples right so uh take a look at this it start the RSEC analysis in the current path it means if i don't put any uh, flags the RSEC view as a good in the exactly currently current uh, current path right so in, it means in this case in this path right in this folder or project whatever right so okay another example of course we have many examples but i just uh, talk about something some uh, flags in this case uh the a right so it's an authorization strings the authorization talk from the rsec api for example after you perform your scan in your code you can send all these codes or not these codes or these uh all those vulnerabilities found in your code to send to the RSEC manager because we have a manager to manage this vulnerabilities, just not a code, right? The vulnerabilities found, right? So it's very important to just to clarify. Okay, another point is related to this dash O. In this case, it's output format, right? Output dash format string. The format for the output to be shown, shown options were in the text and st dot json and take a look at this the sonar cube you know maybe you are you are maybe a question to you so Philippe, i like to use the sonar cube in my environment i work with type sec you know i'm a i am a sec guy and uh, uh my company we we use that uh, we use um sonar cube but sonar cube looks in your quality of your software and of course they have some, you know, security settings in the configuration. Some settings in the in the in the Sonar Cube. I don't know exactly how deeply is the the this the setting, this configuration. But OrSec, it was created to to the community, right? For a community, but for a security team. Thought uh, it was uh, thought in security way, way, right? So it's very important. To clarify because it's um you know you can use both of them the the, the tools the sonar cube to see the quality and our sec to see the security right and another interesting uh flag here it's it's here dash e right because it's in this case return error the returning error is the option to check if you can return exit one it means for example, if I would like to put this in my pipeline, for example, to see that there's this life cycle. Do you remember that I explained that this as DLC? Okay, I can put this in my GitHub action, for example. If I receive this uh, as it one, for example, I if found some vulnerability, you know, it's uh, I can set, for example, here, take a look at the explanation. If I found vulnerabilities, I can break you know, I can break my uh, pipeline because my code it was vulnerable, right? So I just set the uh, dash E equal true because if it's true in this case, 
it means the code it was vulnerable right so it's like if i put here false in this case the exit is zero in this case the pipeline can go on right so that's very important okay perfect you you explain i think i explained something so take a look at this i have uh four three four no five five folders here and i will execute so now the rsec start and i can i just click enter here take a look at this the folder selector is it's my my folder here in rsec dash demo proceed yes or no and yes if i put for example uh dash p i need to set the, the real path right for example if i would like to scan um to, to perform this scanning another path i just put dash p equal and i need to select the path right so i can uh execute this way right so i just click enter and now when we started the rsec is coming in my project. In this case, this is the name of this project, right? So guys, if you have any questions, you can send uh, in the Discord channel, I think, if I am correct. And uh, I'm totally available to talk during this scanning because it, but it's fast, it's very fast here, as you can see. So if you see here, the RSEC created some doc RSEC uh, file just to, uh, during this scanning right and after that the 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 file is delete, the, deleted um okay our sec and the analysis with start error and why because we found some vulnerabilities right with the following results uh we start in this time right and finish in this time so i think it's uh 30 minutes, 30, I think 30 minutes, right? So let's see the logs, very important. So you can see here the language, it's Java. And here's the, in here, the severity, right? So, but Felipe, uh, what, what is the, the severity that you have inside of the other side here? Nice question. You can see here, for example, in a glossary, you can see here the explanation. Vulnerability means a security breach in the project in, and can cause some damage. Yes, of course, we are in the security event. <laughs> of course, if you found some vulnerability, it's, it's, it's maybe call, can cause some damage, right? And to the system or the organization. RSEC can identify six types of the security breach. It's very interesting. It's almost the same, it's, it's a similar, it's very similar when you think about the, the MITRE, not MITRE, then a CVE, for example, if you are, uh, if you would like to register some CVE ID, it's usually using the same, uh, almost the same meaning, right? So we have the first, the critical, high, medium, low, info. It means it's a warning. No, you know, you don't, it's not classified by low or, you know, medium. It's, it's just an info warning. It may be one no. What, what does that mean? So no, it's a zero day. No, it's not a zero day, of course, but probably the engine don't you know identify what is exactly it's not an info it's not a, it's not clear it's not a, a, a you know a good code code uh, but it's maybe you know it's unknown but it's not a zero day okay just to clarify that right so let's really return here in this case it's high take a look at this it's for my <clears throat> my side it's very interesting so the line two column seven in the code Security tools or SEC engine, in this case for Java, confidence, it's low. And here, guys, you can see the real file, right? In this case, take a look. This, this is the, the main project, right? Uh, when I execute this right, scanning or SEC dash demo. But here you can find this is the or SEC real is performing this is scanning all those files to try and find some vulnerable code inside this project. And he found the app doc Java, right? Code vulnerable, import Java doc, doc until doc Randall, right? Why? Because in details it's insecure, Randall number generate. But okay, I would like to see more information about this vulnerability, right? So the apps uses an insecure random number generate. For more information, check out the CVE. 30, 30 uh, 330 okay and you can click here 
if you'd like to see more information about that because you can close here okay you can see this information it's not the definition by Philippe Pires or Zoop Innovations or whatever it's definitions it's based on the CWE common weakness enumerations right so as you can see here the weakness ID and take a look at this it's a good 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 library to learn not library I don't know it's the correct name but you know it's a not, not library it's a good resource to learn more about the security right because you can see the parent off of another vulnerabilities like a uh, interface entropy for example and uh, you can click, click here and you can read more about that right so you can improve your knowledge when in security stuff right it's very important but this vulner vulnerability is related at, at my code right as we see here in my CLI, right? So all those explanation. Here the type is vulnerability and here the reference hash. It means we have the reference of this vulnerability, right? So uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, here another is JavaScript, it's the same case, it's high or sec Java. And here below another, another language, it's Go in this case, right? The severity is median. Line is 23, column 7. And take a look, this the security tool is different. In this case, it's a GoSec. Do you remember GoSec? It's another interesting open source project to um, use it that we have inside the OrSec, right? So as you can see here, the correct file, u2.go, inside of this path, right? And as you can see here, the name is uh, the details of this uh, vulnerable code is use of weak cryptography pri primitive, right? And uh, in the end of this log, take a look at this in these analysis and a total of the five possible vulnerabilities were found and we classify it then in, right? So it's a five and you execute this inside your environment. Okay, but let's suppose that you work with um, um, uh, Visual Studio Code, a VS Code, right, like me here. And here, as you can see, we have our sec demo is the same folder, right? So I have here all those codes, right, in Golang and Java and Node.js and PHP. So I can basically write or like here and i have here the extension to download inside of my vs code right so here it's very very useful to use because you just to click here and uh, start analysis as you can see here hold on or like started to analyze in your code as you can see here let me close here okay and if you see here or sex oops security analysis running it's running during our talk our conversation it means it's running some uh, analysis during these conversations okay so first of all i execute my scan in the cli so now i'm executing the orsac in the vs code so you can use in both of them to to see the environment so okay let's see here the first folder java and take a look at this if i just put in my mouse uh, above this you can see the explanation again you know as you can see here, but you can click here and take a look at this. The real code, guys, the real code here. Here is the code vulnerable. If I put my, my just my mouse here, you can see the insecure Randall number generator, right? Again, here you can see the explanation. The app uses an insecure Randall number generator for more information. Oops, check out the CVE. 330 again here you can find the information let's see here another here injection another here's the process right so let me put here using a shell interpreter when executing eos comments arbitrary eos command injection vulnerabilities were were more likely when a shell is spawned rather than a new process so here you can found you can find here the explanation about this um this vulnerability right so again guys you can see difference many different um explanations about this vulnerability so you can imagine if you are a developer you produce your code you have your code by the way i have 
some similar presentations in my in, in the not mine in the Zoop channel in the Zoop YouTube channel, but in Portuguese presentation. I probably I will produce. I will you know I will do a demo similar when I create my web page. This web page here, and I create this um, this web page using you know a uh, a semi statistic page. I create this, and after that, I execute this uh, or sec to analyze to analyze to as a good summarize if this web page it was vulnerable or not. So I can maybe in the future to present this to yourself, right? Uh, to to you to understand more about this in the real code because here it's just a a, a few uh, you know lines about the code. It's not a, a complete code with a many like here. Here it's another uh, interesting because if you remember here. It's uh, in this case, it's a, a, a median because it's, you know, as I mentioned, it's a, um, a weak cryptography primary primitive. And here you can see the total code, right? But it's a small code actually. Okay, I explain more about the, you know, the CLI, the VS code, but let's see here another interesting thing. Let's suppose that you have some, um, Pipeline is a good in your own environment. Take a look. This we have here the GitHub Actions, and as you can see here, it's uh, I don't have any job is a good in here and or ever right. So I but I here I have here my code right in my environment, and I can let's suppose that I can publish this in the GitHub, but I can publish this of course not vulnerable. Perfect. Okay. So let's return here to the documentations. Where is the documentation? It's here. Okay. Uh, in a CLI extension ID that I explained to you, right? So using the uh, VS Code. But here, if you see in the CLI installation, here, other way is to execute this in a, via image Docker, right? To run this command. And another point is installing installation via pipeline. This type of this installation assures that a safe in the deliver of your project in production, right? So here this is important. Since your sec is added to your pipeline. So let's suppose that I have I have here my pipeline and it's I will execute the R sec in my code before to put this in production, right? So we tested uh, we tested uh R sec in GitHub Actions, AWS code builds. In another Circle CI and Jenks and Azure DevOps pipeline in GitHub CI CD, right? So both and all in all those uh, uh, pipeline you have here the uh, command as you can see here. So, but let me return here. Let me close this, this, and this, and this. Another example here in this. Okay. So let me return here. We if what I need to. Uh, to try to put something inside the GitHub X. Let me click here. I need to set this workflow. I need to have this workflow actually inside of my environment, right? I have here the rsec demo slash doc GitHub. I need to create this workflow, but I have I need to have the main uh, file called doc eml, right? Not main, but I can put whatever name I want, right? And I just put here main. In this case, I can put you know besides or you know uh auto sec or whatever and here is the standard information that i need to put here okay let me turn here not here github actions and okay if i need to create something i have here the github and workflow so what i need to create here the or sec not our sec i can put whatever name again eml right and i have here in the documentations, this command. Let me copy here. I will copy and I will pass here. So I will call this workflow the name uh, security pipeline, this job actually. And this this job we will execute this run, this command actually. The crow, as you can see here, the same code, the same command that I execute in the beginning, right? To download the RSEC. After that, the the command call the RSEC start, right? To execute, to start the RSEC dash P to set the path, right? In this case, the, the root path, not root path, but the, the path that this uh, environment have has, right? 
and dash e. In this case, it's true. Do you remember that I explained it to you? When we have true in this case, I receive the error exit one. In this case, I will break my pipeline, right? So I just say here this orsec doc EML here, and I need to white what 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 I need to do. I need to let me see if it works here. Okay, it works because I'm using SSH access. Okay, so GitHub add a new a new file, right? So I will commit this information because I, mean, I have here this new file in my environment. I need to commit this remotely to GitHub, right? Or sec demo, one file change, right? So in this case, exactly file that I, I have been created, right? So I need to push this information to original master. Okay, okay. So let me click here. I need to put my password and uh, let's see. Okay, heads up. It was, I think it works. Let me return here in my GitHub actions. I will click here and take a look what happened. Wow, we have a security pipeline it works here for us. Okay, security demo, the name of this uh, flow, the workflow, right? If I click here, I can see my job, right? So I'm executing this uh, GitHub actions using this, you know, the similar on my pipeline, right? So let me click here and take a look at this. I will set up the job here, you know, setting the GitHub token, the permissions and okay. Using the checkout code, run something to understand the environment and what, take a look what happened here. Let me see here what happened in the end of this is cunning. As I mentioned to you, I think it's small, okay. Error, take a look at this process completed with exit code one. In this case, my code is vulnerable, as you can see here. And by the way, I receive here in my phone the message from GitHub, right? Because I have a problem in my code. And take a look at this. In this case, I have seven possible vulnerabilities. The same uh, scanning executed in my CLI. And let's see here this information, take a look at this. Run the scan, it means execute the curl, right? The scanning, after that, execute this or sec start, start dash P and dash E through. If my code is vulnerable, my pipeline, it was break, broke, right? So this is very cool because you can put or sec in your pipeline, right? So, okay, Philip, we execute in the three ways and a CLI and VS code and, uh, um, and using a GitHub actions, but you have a, another one. You have here the web applications. It means we have a manager to manage all these vulnerabilities, right? So, and take a look, it's very simple to execute this. I will use in install with a Docker Compose. This is re the, the requirements in your environment, Docker, Docker Compose, Docker, and Linux. It's very, very simple. Just to git copy he here, git cloning in the RSEC environment, right? So let me hit turn here. I will pass here. Git cloning. Okay. Okay, git cloning. And the uh, URL basically is RSEC dash platform from Zupi IT, it's a, it's a, in a GitHub, okay? I will execute this and I will download this, this orsec-platform, cd orsec-platform, enter, and after that, just make install. Very, very difficult. And after that, boom, the service or all those services and dockers it will be works, right? It's very simple. If you return here in the in the documentations, it's very simple. Enter the folder you have cloned, as I as I made. Run the command make install in order to have all web applications because you need to have some Docker's in your environment, right? So you execute this in your environment. Of course, I have it uh, already exists because I 
I have some, I have doing, I've been doing these presentations in other events. And after that, access our sex services, just copy here. This info, it's a, just a for demo. Yeah, so you can use it in your environment as you prefer, right? So we have here our sec web page. You, you can go there and you can copy this. Please, if you use in your environment, change the password, guys, please. It's very important to change this the full password. You know, if you don't change, it's a misconfiguration, right? So, okay. So, okay, let me go to this workspace. Let me delete this because I present this yesterday, I think. Something happened. I'm expecting to try again, but it works. Let me click here. Enter. And okay. So when you uh, connect it in this in your sec, this is the, the real uh, web page. Let me connect again here. Just to show you when you copy here. Nice. I close here. Copy the local you this the local page. I will copy here. And I will paste here. Okay. And I will copy this. And I will paste here. And I will sing in and here. This is the, the web page when I was when I will be logged. Right. So I need to add the workspace. I can call it from this site, for example, and I will add this workspace. Sorry, I will add here these sites. I can put some description, but I don't need to put now. I need to click here and take a look at this. I need to, I can use the token to identify, add token, the, the sites. And after that, I just click in save. And I can copy this, okay. And after that, I can just execute this uh, again. So I can return here and go to our Seki demo, and I can click here or Seki start. And here I can set. Do you remember dash a equals column? And I passed here the Okay. okay, I just need to pass here. And after that, all those vulnerabilities will, will be send, sent to this manager, as you can see here. Okay, and take a look at this. This is a good point because if you have a good team with many developers, you can see, for example, during the week, during the day, or during um, a month, for example, uh, what kind of language it has more vulnerable codes, for example, if, uh, if it is, for example, JavaScript, uh, the manager can generate some, can suggest some training with a, a secure development to a job, for example, right? And it's very interesting. Let me click here in workspace. In this case, not here, it's here, workspace. And as you can see, one developer, it's me, one repository, and here we can find all the vulnerabilities. Hi, the language, JavaScript and JavaScript. And here you can find other informations uh, like, uh, you know, JavaScript is high, low. And I need to do some improvements in my front end, as you can see here, right? And if you click here in vulnerabilities, um, not here. Here, actually, we have some problem getting my, probably my environment, it was, uh, with some problems, some errors, because as you can see here, I used it's another database in another presentations, but it means, you know, it's very simple. All those vulnerabilities, these vulnerabilities, it was, uh, it, it is some, these vulnerabilities are sent, are sent to this uh, space. And after that, you can manage it. It's in this case, severity, you can see the severity and you can see here, uh, all the what is the stats? For example, if you uh, pass, if you send your team and you your team uh, makes the improvement of this code, you can put the corrected, 
right? So if he is a false positive, you can click here. And after that, if he a risk accept, you can click here. And usually when you have here the vulnerabilities, this is the correct stats, right? So here I finish my presentation, guys. Again, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you have some question. Let me close here my video. And I finish my presentations here again. I hope this um, presentation will be helpful for you. And here I can see you more. And manage my and again yes. if you have any questions please feel free yes thank you for your demonstration felipe uh uh you presented a great sas tool today horasec um it was a pleasure and it was nice meeting you today um remember to hop on discord right after if you want to talk to our sponsors and community organizers also felipe would love to say hi to you guys afterwards so just meet him in the track one in the weeds breakout room. Uh, thank you for attending San Antonio B Slides, everybody, and I hope you guys have a great evening. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you. Bye.